Moving on now, this Thursday is the third of the the third day of the Eighth World Congress against the death penalty in Berlin, which comes to a close on Friday. For more on that, I have the pleasure of welcoming Deborah Milke to the show. Now, she's particularly well positioned to speak on the issue as she spent over 20 years on death row in the United States, uh, in the state of Arizona, for a crime that she did not commit. Deborah, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you. So if, if you're comfortable uh, with it, could you perhaps start by telling us more about your case? Uh, well, um, in 1989, um, I was a single mother. I had a four-year-old son named Christopher, and he was murdered by uh, someone I thought was my friend. And I was falsely accused uh, by a corrupt rogue detective and he fabricated a confession and I was brought to trial and I was found guilty and then sentenced to death. And then uh, for the next uh, 22 years, I fought, literally fought for my life and my freedom. And I uh, finally was released in 2013. Deborah, what, what ultimately led to your exoneration? Uh, it came out, well, the detectives passed uh, there was, you know, my whole case was my word against his. And um, so we found um, evidence that he did these things, uh, uh, creating evidence and fabricating evidence against people. He did this to other people. And so that's that's how that it came. It finally came out. Can you can you describe a little bit of what it's like to be on death row and especially to spend uh, so much time there? Often cases take decades to to kind of go through. Uh, so what does life look like for you? What did it look like for you and for the tens of thousands of others who are on death row? Well, it's a very lonely feeling and uh, you feel cut off from the world. Um it's 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 a very scary place if you're not the type of person to commit a crime and end up in prison. So uh, I felt like a fish out of water in this place. And you you know it came down to a choice. You can either uh, you know find a way to survive or you just give up. And I was not going to give up. So I just found ways to survive, and so I, I was able to do that. All, all the better that you did, Deborah, given, of course, that you were exonerated. But th that doesn't necessarily undo the harm that was done over those two decades. What happens uh, to people in the U.S. when a court rules that they were wrongfully convicted? Is there any reparation? And either way, I imagine that it's very difficult, if not impossible, to return to life as it was before. Uh, well, yes, it's a very strange feeling to come out when because while you're, you know, incarcerated, things change, you know, out there. Like I came out to cell phones, didn't even know how to use one. Um, some states have exonerate. Uh, uh, they pay for wrongful convictions and some states don't. Arizona was one of them that didn't. Um, it, you know, the state, when they release you, it's 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 basically like they just kick you out there. You're on your own. Uh, no apology, nothing. And so it's really difficult to try to pick up where you left off. Like like I just had to, you know, figure out how to get a driver's license again. And, uh, you know, a, a, my Social Security card. It's not easy. There are no really there are no resources for people who are wrongfully convicted uh, and then we get released. I imagine this was all the more difficult for you, Deborah, because were you even allowed to grieve the, the loss of your son? In prison, I couldn't I, I, because I had to fight for my life and my freedom. Um, so I compartmentalized and I put it aside. But when I got when I finally won my case and was released, it was a bittersweet victory. And then the reality of my son's murder hit me hard and fast. And so I've been in therapy um, all these years and I'm, I'm still trying to, to deal with it. I imagine it's, it's, it's a lifelong uh, journey, Deborah. It, 
How does your mm -hmm. story specifically illustrate, do you think, some of the major flaws of the death row system, specifically in the United States? Well, you know, I, I, I don't want to paint a broad uh, a picture. Not all police officers are corrupt. There's a handful of them that are. And, um, you know, that's a problem. Just because you have a badge and a gun, that doesn't make you God. And you, you know, you have to abide by the rules and the law as well. Uh, that's one part of it. The other part of it is the prosecutors. Uh, you know, it, it, they just uh, care about a conviction. They say they they care for the victim and 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 the and justice and truth, but sometimes that's not true at all. They are are, are will do anything to get a conviction. And it doesn't matter what the truth is, they will tell the jury the story that they want to tell. Deborah, do you have any idea uh, of how many, the percentage of people on death row where a wrongful conviction is suspected? Uh, I don't know. I do know that about 190 people uh, that were on death row have been released. Uh, we suspect that there's a lot more innocent people on death row today. And this is why we are fighting to, to end it. Because if you execute an innocent person, it's irreversible. You can't bring that person back. Deborah, I want to move now a little bit uh, to, to your activism. You are uh, active in Arizona, where you work with organizations that raise awareness about the death penalty. Are people receptive to your story, especially in the more conservative areas of the United States? Well, I no longer live in Arizona, so I don't do anything in Arizona. Um, I belong to an organization called Witness to Innocence. And uh, we, we, are, we do advocacy work across the country. We have been successful in helping some states abolish the death penalty. Uh, we've also been invited to speak to prosecuting offices across the country, which I have done. Um, we're speaking with law enforcement and it's, it's it, you know, we feel like we're getting heard. Deborah, we have time for just one one last question. Unfortunately, you're attending, if I'm if I'm correct, this eighth World Congress against the death penalty held every three years in a different city. What are some of the priorities for this year's meeting? This one is um, abolished now, um, and it's 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 amazing. There's people from all over the world that are that are here, and uh, it, uh, the goal is is to abolish the death penalty around the world. Um, but but there's a lot of people here. It's opened my eyes. You know, I didn't realize that it was a problem in other pl in other places. Deborah Milka, thank you so much for joining us on the show today for sharing your story. Uh, and best of luck to you. Thank you so much.